Hey, welcome back to my channel. Got a tadpole three incher here with the little, I'm gonna call it the nano build. <laughs> I got my radio master and a lipo, so I'm kind of going through some stuff here with this. Now, this tadpole uh, was supposed to be a complete build on the channel. There's there's quite a quite a few people on the channel that subscribed that wanted to see a full build on this, and unfortunately, I had to scrap the build video. It just the sequences were out of place. I had such a terrible time with the uh, Flywoo 16 by 16 stack. So the ESC, the flight controller, and the VTX. Uh, just an absolute nightmare to work with uh, all of it so far. Um, they did send me a new flight controller. And unfortunately, uh, it had the same exact problem. So hours and hours were spent. I finally got the flight controller to work correctly. I got a lot of the bugs worked out. I finally got the VTX to work. So I I'm sure I'm sure there's some people out there that just love the 16 by 16 flywoo uh product but i can i can assure you that i'm a, i'm not happy and nobody's gotten back to me for tech support i will have to say i appreciate race day quads now i don't do any affiliated stuff i don't have anything sent to me for reviews at this point in time nothing on my channel has been sent to me for review okay i bought everything or i'm working on someone's equipment like i don't own it I'm, I'm working on it for them or fixing it so no plug to race day quads but i'm just saying i can call them up and tell them what's going on they show them the video show them the pictures and and they're you know they're, you know they're trying to be helpful they send me they i mean quickly sent me a flight controller and it, it just wasn't happening same problem so i've got lots of hours involved in making this thing fly as smooth as it does and that's why we're here because I'm actually enjoying flying the thing. I really didn't think I was going to like it. I thought, you know, this was going to be one that I was going to scrap out in pieces. And <laughs> I was going to get rid of some of the other things. But with this this little 450 uh, pack on this thing, it, it, is, it is absolutely, uh, it's a ripper. So check it out. I'm going to go through a full overview. Okay. So we're going to overview this. I'm going to go into the transmitter. I'm going to show you each screen in the transmitter of the setup. And then I'm going to plug in the beta flight. We're going to go through each screen in beta flight, kind of go through what I've what I've set up. We're also going to go into BOHEL ES because I've I've ran the Jazz Mavic um, ESC uh, protocol to do RPM filtering. I also have a flight video. Now I'll have to admit the 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 VTX link quality is not superb, so take that with a grain of salt. But at least you get to see it fly. Does it rip like a five incher? I don't know. Let you decide. Um, but yeah, this is going to be quite a quite a long video. I'm going to go through everything that I can with you, and you can see. I want you to stay tuned though, because I actually have. This flight controller, um, because I, I spent so many hours getting this one to work, I've dubbed everything over to this one, or I'm planning on it. Right now, this is still bone stock the way Race Day Quad sent, sent it to me with all the problems. We're going to fix this thing, and we're going to put it in a build. I'm waiting on a frame um, to come. I'm not going to mention that right now on this. I have the Fox Ear. Um, this is the Fox Ear Toothless 2 Nano. I have the HGLRC 16 by 16 VTX, so we're going, um, we're going with that stuff. And I have a used RXSR that I'm still using. I know you guys keep telling me, like, dude, get the, you know, get that Crossfire stuff out. Go get that in there. I'm, I just, I want to use up my uh, RXSRs. So let's do, let's do this. Let's get into this. Uh, build overview we're already four minutes and four and a half minutes into this video we haven't even started taking anything apart i'm excited so let's 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 get in here all right we got the top popped off I'll get in a little bit closer when we need to, but for now, I have iFlight. Uh, these these are the nano motors. You 
if you follow the channel, you know I've been kind of traipsing around trying to find a good build for these. These are 1206 4500 KV 4S capable motors. I've ran them on 4S and I'm not impressed. They get really hot and uh, they wind out pretty high. So I'm running them on 3S and I think I found a prop combination with the 3S LiPo that, that these motors like. So these are the 4500 KV 1206 iFlight Nano motors. And then they are connected to the ESC. I've got another ESC here now. So this ESC actually seems to be working out pretty good. I did have a full desync in one of my previous flights. So I'm still kind of seeing what's going on with that. Uh, but so far... It, it's handling it pretty well. So, of course, we have positive and negative here. And underneath here, you can see that I soldered this uh, capacitor in on the bottom side. This this tadpole frame actually has a cutout here that this capacitor that comes with the stack from Flywoo, that capacitor fits right in there pretty well. So you're able to get that, you're able to get that really, really low profile down in there okay and then above that capacitor I have the RXSR I also have my battery leads coming out so my RXSR is kind of glued to the to the battery leads that are zip tied down so it's pretty secure you see this here on the side here that's that's just the 82 or 85 decibel uh, beeper so that's connected to the flight controller okay so we have the RXSR, we have our beeper, we have our ESC, our flight controller. So we have the, the Goku uh, flight controller. And then on top we have the VTX 625. So this is a 20, uh, this is, I guess it's a whoop capable and it's also 20 by 20 capable and 16 by 16 capable. And you just snap the tabs off uh, to make it fit. This button right here is what changes the channels and bands and power, and it is a pain to work with, and this thing gets really hot. I mean, within just a few seconds, this thing is at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, it is unbelievable, smoking hot so fast. So you definitely want to have a fan blowing on it, or I've got a, you know, a difficult one. That's kind of like the uh, Spedex IS100 stack came with this VTX. The uh, IS100 VTX. I don't know. This thing gets super hot too. I just do. I just use this for testing, playing around with stuff. But anyway, we have the Runcam Phoenix 2 Nano, and you can see in the cage here that this uh, Tadpole 3 inch is only capable of running a Nano camera. So that's the only thing that'll fit there, 14 inch or um, 14. Inch. The only thing that'll run in there is a 14 millimeter. Um, we have a, a Emax. This is their Nano uh, right-hand polarized antenna with the UFL connector. So, and that's just uh, strapped to a zip tie. And then these are the Avan three-inch props, and they are the Avan Mini. So they're the three-inch. Pretty, pretty decent pitch on them too. They don't have any code numbers on, but I th I think I think they are a three by three by three. So three by three by three prop is a, that's a pretty good prop. Now I've put bi props on it. I've put other types of props on it. I've put gem fan props on it. 30 16s, 30 20, uh, two point fours. I've put several different kind of props on here, and honestly, this combination was just night and day. These props with these motors running, running a, a 3S LiPo uh, really kind of catch me out kind of thing. The uh, um, the uh, throttle response is, is pretty good. Now I also ha I have these uh, GEP-RC 1206 4500 KV motors. Um, I like quite well and I've had these for years. I've flown them for a long time and I really like them. And this is what's going to go on the uh, new Nano build. So I'm going to build a very similar 
one to this, but I'm going to use these motors. And I, I really think that these motors are going to outperform this quad, but it's going to be interesting to see. Is it, is it better? Is it true? Because it's going to run almost the same exact setup. So anyway, before I get all excited about that, so let's, uh, let's go through a couple components here of what we've done and what we, uh, what we're struggling with as well. And let's zoom in here. So I have my RXSR here and I'm running the un, this is the uninverted, uh, hack. So basically it's a little solder pad there and I got a wire going to the TX of the flight controller. So now the flight controller is in there. I'm just going to put this flight controller on top so that way I don't have to take my stack apart. Okay. <laughs> makes, makes it a little bit easier, don't it? Um, so you have your USB port. Just make sure I have my orientation correct. All right, so we have our uninverted line going to, now this stack is the Flywoo F411 uh, stack. So if you need to look it up online, you can see the, it's Goku. All right, there it'll pull up as Goku F411 micro stack, okay? So on this board, we're gonna go first, um, we have the ground, so here's your ground pad. Here's your five volt pad, okay? And then the RXSR is connected to the uh, R1 inverter, okay? So we're connected to the third pad over. If you run Crossfire um, or a different type of receiver, you're gonna run to this pad, Then that's the R1 pad uh, that's non-inverted. So this is inverted for S bus. Okay, so that's what the RXSR is gonna run to. So that one I skipped, cause I'm running RXSR. And then over here, this last pad is your TX1 pad. So that's what I have the uninverted, um, if you will, the uninverted hack uh, on the RXSR going to, to here. I have uh, worked very hard on trying to get this to work. I've ran it both ways. I know if you're looking at my RXSR, it looks a little different. I've actually depinned it. So like on the RXSRs, you have this this uh, pin header. I've actually unsoldered that pin header and directly soldered it to the, the pins. Okay. Um, so each wire you see here is actually where the pins were. Okay. And then that's your bind button. So anyway, I've done the uninverted hack, and it's running over to T, T1 pad. Unfortunately, I cannot get any telemetry data to work. I've tried everything, every trick in the book. The, the uh, duplex on, duplex off, I've tried, um, you know, it, it, all kinds of stuff. I don't really want to get into all that because you know, I sp spent hours messing with this thing already. And it's just a little three inch ripper. So let's go over here to this side and make sure I have my orientation. So right here, we're working with the ground. And then if you have um, the second pad in, if you're working with like a, a spectrum receiver that needs 3.3 volts, you can pull it off of this pad here, okay? And then in my case, I'm running a five volt pad. So I'm actually running a five volts off of this pad. And then this is the ground. So there's actually two grounds. There's one here. And then there's also one over here. Now they boast in their manual, they're saying that there's a built in LC filter for the VTX. So they're saying to use this ground and this five volt for your VTX. Okay. Because they're, you know, they're saying there's filtration there. So um, I didn't see any when I was flying. I didn't notice there was that much filtration. So take it with a grain of salt. And then the third pad uh, over here is for the video out. Okay, so that's the wire you're going to take from your flight controller here. And that's going to go to your VTX. Okay, so this OSD information, this is your OSD chip. That information will overlay your video and come out here. All right. 
and then this fourth pad right here in the middle here that fourth pad is your TX2 pad and that TX2 is your for your smart audio so your VTX control will go to that pad all right and then they also have an RX2 pad, which I didn't use. So there's RX2. In case you want to run Spectrum or something, I guess you can run Ground 3.3 and then RX2. That's my assumption. Okay. And then on the uh, front side, I call this the front side because you see this arrow? That's the orientation of this board. This is saying that this is up and facing forward. And this is all your camera um, outputs and inputs so if you have the flywoo vtx which i do in this build I, i'm not going to have it in the next build but if you do uh, run the flywoo if you do run the flywoo vtx this pad right here is actually a an led pad it's a jumper pad so you're going to run a wire from here up to your vtx led and they'll communicate so then all the lights will, all the LEDs, see these, that one there? There's another one over here, here and here. Those are LEDs and they, they're very bright and it's, I'll show them to you here in a second. But that pad runs to your, um, it'll run to your VTX and it'll light those little lights up for you, okay? So those LEDs will all be in sequence and it's dazzling. So anyway, uh, the next pad here is your beeper signal. So you can run your five volts to your beeper. So like on this beeper here, I have my hot going to the five volt. And the ground wire for this beeper is actually, oops, sorry about that, is going to that second pad, which is the beeper. Your beeper negative pad normally is the signal pad for your beeper, okay? I don't know if you know that. Normally that's the negative. Camera input okay so your camera is going to go into this pad so your camera will go your yellow wire will go into that third pad right there let me see if i can turn this so you don't get confused so that pad is the camera in now remember it came out over here okay because it's got to go in here and then it goes through your osd and then they're saying that there's an lc filter going on so this is filtered um, my, my, v, my video I'm going to show you at the end of this is in my goggles was pretty good, but for some reason my sh fat shark DVR, um, messed it up. So it's not as good for you to watch, but that's where your video goes in. Okay. And then your camera can be powered from this five volt and ground. Okay. So I hope that, I hope that helps you out. Um, if, and then you're going to need this boot button, or at least I did. Uh, the first thing I had to do was reflash it. The problem was, is after you reflash this board, um, I was unable to get the defaults back. So like the LEDs didn't work. Uh, some of the other uh, stuff on here didn't work. So that was quite a pain. Hopefully you don't have any problems like that. Now the VTX. We got the VTX all connected up and that was that was not an easy task okay you can see here these solder pad I mean here just give me an, a, a, that's my index finger I mean that that is no joke what they expected you to solder in this thing all right so with the VTX the pads um, are flipped around okay so these are the pads that I used for the VTX. And on the other side of these, um, they are sequence. So basically you have this triangular shape. So you have the these three spots and then over. Yeah, I know this is missing a screw or a, a nut. Um, but I was starting to take it apart and then I changed my mind because I, I have the, you know, I have a flight controller to show you. So... On this VTX here, I use these pads. So on the other side, I tin those. And you actually have from the center point, so you have your triangular shape, okay? And this would be the, the top corner, if you will. 
So starting with the pad from the top corner, that's the pad um, that you use to go to your LED. So on your flight controller, the pad that I told you had the, the LED pad, that's, that's where you run a wire from there to your flight controller so that the LEDs on the, um, you know, two here and then there's one on each corner here on your, if you see that. So right here there's one. And then right, let me see here, it's right here, okay? So there's one, two, and then three and four LEDs on the on the VTX itself. So this is going to be, a, you know, all you have to do is just solder a wire from, from here to the flight controller LED, and it will energize those LEDs and make them sparkle and all that. So, and then this is your video out okay so this is the pad um, that comes from your from your flight controller so it has all your e, uh, OSD information on it and everything so that's where you put your video line that goes into the second pad the third pad is your um, they call it the RX but this is the pad that you're gonna solder to your TX pad on your flight controller Okay, in my case, I, I told you I use TX2, so this is the pad. The third one down is the pad you're going to use. The next pad, so it would be the fourth pad, is your ground. And the final, the final one over is your 5 volt. So you're going to feed 5 volts to this pad. You're going to run a ground, and then the third one over is your, is your communication to your TX2 pad on your flight controller. And then, of course, you have your video going into that one. And then LED, this is extra you don't need to use, okay? So hopefully that makes you understand what I'm doing here. And then this button, depending on, it says, like, hold it down for, like, 10 seconds, and it'll unlock the extra channels. Um, I, I I fought with this. I had, I had spent so much time dinking with this button so I could get smart audio to work because smart audio wouldn't work right off the bat. So I had to dink with this, and it said all three of these LEDs, there's one, two, three. So these LEDs here are going to light up in different sequences. So this one's going to be red, this one's going to be blue, and this one's going to be yellow. So the red LED, this this first one here that lights up red, is going to indicate your power. So your 25 milliwatt, your 100 milliwatt, your 250 milliwatt, I think it is, 450 milliwatt. I have to look again, but, and then this blue one is for your uh, frequency okay so that's your band your, your your fat shark your race band whatever so however many blue blinks you get that's that's what you're gonna end up with um, and then the channel is the yellow one so depending on what channel you're on now you know if you ever ordered anything from race day quads you're gonna you'd get a, a chart like that okay and it shows you all the bands and channels and and everything so if you run you know let's say you run fat shark band over to the third channel so channel three and you're at fat shark so you're at frequency 5780 okay so that should match up with your your vtx table that you download it onto your flight controller so Basically, that's how you solder that up, and that's where the LEDs are, and this is the button that you use to control that. So every click of that button, while it's powered on, uh, will change your channel. If you hold down on it for the count of two, and then click it one time, it'll add. That's the thing that drove me nuts about this VTX. And this this is the, uh, what they call this VTX? Uh, the Flywoo TX Nano TX... 625 okay so what drove me what drove me crazy was is i would click on this over and over and it and it didn't seem to operate correctly it kept changing the channel well it seems to me like you could only push this down for two seconds and then hit it again and it would up so it would go one two three four five and then it would start over again one two three four five and it would start over again so it would be, you know, band A, band B, band E, band F, uh, race band, and then it would start over. Band A, band B, and it would... <laughs> but you had to, like, hold this down for two seconds and then click it to get it to go one. 
and then you'd have to hold it down for two seconds and click it to get it to go again. If you held it down too long, then your power would up. So it was quite a little nightmare to get this thing to, to work. And then finally I was able to get it to work in Smart Audio. So now I can go into the stick commands in the in my goggles and, and change band and channels and everything. But it was, I mean, it took a long time for me to, to get this to, to work. So um, it wasn't a normal situation for me to have to, to have to deal with that. Don't let me forget that, okay? Don't let me forget to put that nut back on. I wanted to pull this apart for you, but I changed my mind. All right, so that takes care of that. We have our nano camera, and out of our nano camera is this goofy connector. And it's totally proprietary to some other type of connector, so I cut it off. And I soldered these three wires directly to the flight controller. So I cut them, I stripped them, I tinned them, and I soldered them to the flight controller. And then these two wires here, I've just got them rolled up and bundled up. And then underneath, if you could see through that hole right there, can you see the, the connector right down in, through there? So I could take my tweezers and pull that connector out of this hole. And I can modify my um, camera settings. And this Nano Phoenix 2 camera is really nice. And I can't wait to try out the Fox Ear uh, Starlight Nano. On the, on the build that I'm going to do pretty soon. Uh, the beeper, we already went through that. And then as far as soldering the uh, motor wires, because these motors, I mean, if you follow my channel, I've put these motors on quite a few different frames and <laughs> I've been messing with them. And uh, so I, I, I had enough space to run them under here and then over here. So that's, that's all I've done is just ran them over and under. So... Hopefully you can see that nice and neat. You can see the now just to get just to let you know that screw in there is not all the way down. The one thing I don't like about this is because they do have the the little connector. Let me show you here. So I've got my flight controller and ESC for the future build. Um, see how they got these pin headers. So these pin headers go together. And once, once they're together, that stack is only able to move um, a little bit. But however, on the other side, it can, it can squish down. See, see how it's, the stack is at an angle now? So if you tighten one side down tight, it doesn't really, it's not able to move because of that pin header. But if you tighten it down on the other side pretty tight, you see how your flight controller is not level anymore? Yeah. Keep an eye on that. So if you have like your quad keeps drifting and you keep having issues, then maybe you're either really tight or you, you've lost some stuff and your flight controller keeps, it's not square. So keep that in mind. So hopefully that, um, hopefully that kind of going through everything gives you an idea what I've done uh, as far as wiring this thing up. Uh, in case you're having some issues, you just can't get something to work. That's that's how I've wired it. That's how I got it to work. I cannot get telemetry, a proper uh, telemetry to work, so I can use Lewis scripts and everything. It's not working. I've done I've done a ton of things um, in CLI to get that to work, and it should it should have worked. It should work. Whatever the case may be, it's not working. Um, so if you know there's a little trick in the in the whole shebang let me know but at this point I cannot get telemetry to work uh, so I'm unable to use Lewis scripts let's grab the transmitter and we'll just go through what channels and, and things I, I went I'm gonna go ahead and put this put this little dude back together and we'll get this we'll get the him push back in and working now let's get this transmitter turned on here <laughs> uh -uh. All right, so we have our tadpole pulled up, and we'll go into the menu here. And so I have my fail safe set up as no pulse, and we have the internal, so the internal, and the multi FR Sky D16, and then I I have it uh, channel channel 1 through 16 and then number 16 so that's this for me the receiver number 
it's the 16th quadcopter on this transmitter. So I, I just named it 16. I bound up to it and everything's ready to go. So let's go ahead and page. Nothing on heli setup. And then flight mode and nothing. Now in here we have our... So we have throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. So that's our four... That's our four stick movements, okay? And then I have added A5, which is arm, okay? So I have arming, modes, so I, angle, horizon, and acro. And then I have a beeper set up, and then I have turtle mode set up, and then I have air mode on a switch. Okay, and then I also have pre-arm, and I have my RSSI on channel 12. Uh, so that's how I've set things up and then also I have brought over uh, some of this information from my previous transmitter so you may not need to run the RSSI on a channel anymore because in 4.1 it automatically does it so it's page and then mixer um, basically just have the mixer set up for each one of those. And then I've changed my inputs and outputs so that I have 1,000 and 2,000 in, in the receivers tab of beta flight. And then in telemetry, the only thing I'm getting in telemetry is the, the stock, basically the RXSR's stock information, which is the RSSI value and uh, the five volts that's being supplied to it. I can't get any other, I cannot get telemetry out of that thing to save my hide. So that's it on the transmitter. If you have any questions about settings in that, hit me up in comments, um, but that's pretty general information and I have uh, other build videos where I do full of, full setups on, on quads. So. Um, let me know if you have any issues with that, but I just want to show you that So Let's jump over to beta flight and we'll go through that and be oh hell yes Plug in the beta flight Now fortunately The VTX on, on, at least on mine, the VTX does not power up. Uh, the the receiver and the flight controller are the only things powered up right now. So, go ahead and connect. And we're gonna just grab the quadcopter, and we're gonna we're gonna face it. I'm gonna hold it as level as I can, and I'm gonna face the camera toward the uh, computer screen. Okay, so toward the front of your PC and hold it as level as you can it doesn't have to be exact and then click on this and that way it reorientates this it's correctly so now left and right and back and forward okay now if yours is is you know if you're if you're going forward and it goes like that then you know you're having an issue where your board is orientated incorrectly your arrow on your board the silk screened arrow on your board isn't correct you should, at this point, before you go any further, just make sure that you have back, forward, right, left, back. Okay? And it should, see how fast that's moving? It should move that fast. If it's moving real slow, I'm going to tell you right now, when I first got this flight controller installed, my first trip in the beta flight with it was a nightmare. This thing was moving like this fast, even though in my hand I'm moving the quadcopter like that. On the screen, it was like moving like this. I had to let, I had to set it as level as I could, and I had to calibrate the accelerometer. For some reason, the accelerometer in this thing came from the factory, all whacked out. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, right now, I'm I'm happy with what's going on here. So let's go to Ports tab, and in Ports tab, we have UR1, which is RX, because if you remember in the wiring. I told you the RXSR was wired to UR1, which was the S bus, the inverted S bus pad. And then UR2, I have my BTX uh, tramp protocol. So the, the uh, TX2 is going to my 
BTX. And then this cereal, I had to add this. You're not going to have that unless you add it. And this is a soft, soft cereal um, that I put in here to do my smart part telemetry. So soft cereal one, so it should be on my TX1 pad and smart port telemetry should be coming in. And for some reason it's not working for me. I'm not messing with it anymore for a while. I might get back to it and try to get it figured out. And if you make any changes in here, don't forget you gotta save and reboot. Configurations tab. I went to DSHOT 300 and then I put motor stop on and I have bi-directional D-shot and 12 motor poles 5.5. Five. If you want to mess with this number, you can. Mine is a little bit floaty because these props and motor combination on 3S, it just seems a little bit floaty. I might be able to get it down a little bit. Um, but when I first received this flight controller, I had a lot of problems. This d binary D-shot was en enabled and the 12 poles was not retaining. So every time you saved and rebooted, this information was incorrect and it would not, I mean, would not work. I had to reflash this flight controller to get, to get this to start working. Problem was when I reflashed the flight controller, I lost all my default dump information. So it, it's quite a conundrum that I was going through with this thing. And I don't know if any of you have had similar problems, but like I said, race day quads, you know, they, they took care of me. They gave me, um, you know, replacement and, and whatnot. They took care of me, but it took me a while to get all the information I needed to get the defaults working, get my LEDs working again, to get some of the other things to work and to get it to not, you know, stutter and chatter in the air. It was, it was pretty bad. I almost gave up, but I'm, I'm pretty diligent. And honestly, I don't really have a lot of money to be spending on. All right. So I do have, uh, you know, things working now. So that, that's, I guess that's the point of this. So I did the reverse props, okay, and and I went 4K, 4K, accelerometer on. You don't have these two, so shut them off. 180 degrees. If you want to use turtle mode or you want to be able to arm this thing in a tree, you're going to need that to be 180. Um, got my craft name in there, and I have my telemetry on. I have my soft serial going. And air mode is off, so that way I can put it on a switch. If this is on, okay, if this is enabled all the time, and, you know, there's a lot of people that recommend this being on all the time. I don't. I don't recommend it because it makes it bounce and get crazy and do silly stuff. And when you bump into things, it, it gets all violent. So if you are able to pull your switch and, and disable air mode, uh, during a crash or during a, a bumping into stuff, uh, it's less likely to get crazy with you. Um, so I, as soon as you disable that, it actually enables uh, a, a tab in modes tabs for you to set up a switch. I have my beepers um, so that I can set up the, uh, the alarm to go off. And then here's all my beeper ch uh, channels in here, what I have on and off. Okay. So you can take a look at that at, uh, on a pause. So save and reboot if you change anything in there. Power and battery, 3, 3, 4, 3, and 3, 5. It works for me. Um, I'm landing at 3, 5. So that's where I want. I want my battery to, I'm going to go down to 3, 5 and I'm going to land. If I go a little bit past that, I want it to, to let me know. But the other thing is I don't want this thing screaming every time I hit the throttle. Um, when you start getting lower on the battery, it does. And you'll see in the flight video, it, it gives me a little bit of warning. Uh, PID tuning. So here's my PIDs that I have set up for it. And then here's my profile. So um, now on this also, I had issues and it's still doing it. I can't get rid of it. But if I go to 88 and normally I run my rates higher than this. But if I go to 88 on these two, this thing will absolutely do like seven rotations and hit the ground. At 87, it flies like it should. It's a little bit slow for me. And you'll see in the video, like I'm, I'm trying to do snap rolls and it's not quite creating that full revolution for me. I cannot change this because if I can increase this at all, this board absolutely freaks out. It will spin and there's no way to regain 
control of it. And here's my filter settings. I plan on doing some more things in here, but I'll be honest with you, I, I spent so much time learning 357. I, I haven't really got into this. The 4.17 is just, I, I'm not a guru in this. There's other guys that are, I'm not. So this is how I've set things up though to get it to fly. I have cool motors. Uh, I've got good punch out. I do have a little bit more prop wash than I'd like to have. Um, I'm pretty happy with the results so far, and we'll get into it more. But here's the here's the filter settings that I have on it. Uh, receiver tab. So we have our throttle. I'm closer to the microphone here. Throttle up, down, and then roll left and right. Pitch forward, pitch back, and then y'all. Okay, now can you see can you see this model right here? That that model is is going to do whatever you do. So you can you can kind of line of sight fly this model. So you can kind of fly through there. Okay, so you can try to hold it level, and then you can you can see it do a rotation. Okay. So when I was setting up my rates, if I go above that 87, and it'll go like that, like in real life, it will it will spin in the air and crash. Uh, if I go to 87, it'll it'll do just one full revolution. It, it it's absolutely goofy. Um, but anyway, so we have arming, and then we have a beeper. So that's that beeper is pretty loud, and we have turtle mode. Uh, on my on my uh, turtle mode, I have some music. So, and then uh, we have our modes tabs, and then we have air mode and pre arm. So that's what all those tabs were doing in here. So if you remember all that stuff, you can go into here, and then all of it is is listed here. So now you can see how I have everything set up. So I have pre arm, and then arm, and then I have. Um, after pre-arm is, you can see here pre-arm, and then I can I can arm the quadcopter, okay. And once I let go of pre-arm, air mode comes on. So while I'm flying around, if I hit, crash into something, I can disable air mode. Pre-arm doesn't come back on because once you use it initially, it's gone. It's done until you rearm again. So I can run air mode on a switch here. So that's how that works. And then of course you have. Um, you know, angle, horizon, and acro, okay, and then beeper, flip over, flip over one crash, so that's how I have everything set up on here, and in the motors tabs, you can see I have uh, all these things set up, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fly it in here or do anything with the motors tab, um, if you're curious about the motors tab and how how to check your motors, I have I have a video on that, so you can go in here and click on this, and then you can you know spin your motors up and everything to check that your rotation is correct. Okay, so I have a video on how to do that if you want to look at that. Uh, here's my OSD. So here, here's how I have all my OSD information set up. You can see this. I'll try to go slow here in case you need to take a note. Okay. And video transmitter. So I'm on Fat Shark channel 2, 200 milliwatt. And here's all the VTX tables set up. Now I went right here. See this where it says go to this page? If you click on this page, um, you can go in and get the TRAMP protocol because on the VTX I'm using, it's TRAMP, not Smart Audio. And you can download, you can, you can get the file here that you need, put it on your computer desktop or whatever, and then just say load from and then go get that file and it automatically loads it ready to go here. I can't remember if I had to add or subtract some things here. But basically, that's that's how that's set up. And like I said, I have a miserable time with that. So in here, there's quite a there's quite a list. There's this is pretty extensive um, 
things that they've put in here to make all these LEDs flash and do what they're supposed to do. And when you when you go in and you re reflash this uh, flight controller, because you, if you're having issues like I did, you have to reflash it. You know, you purchase the thing and it won't even work. You have to reflash it and you have to do all this programming. And then this file's gone. This information is non-existent. And then when it says you want to re reload the defaults, it doesn't show up. So your LEDs don't work. You, you bought this like flashy Flywoo um, product and, and none of the LEDs are working after you reflash it. So something something's not right. And uh, like I said, I'm not I'm not doing anything more with it. Uh, I'm going to show you my version. Oops, did I misspell that? I sure did. Version. All right, so I have 4.17 uh, that I've downloaded on there, and then my diff file, things that I've changed. Um, now here is the VTX table. You can you can grab these VTX tables and paste them in the CLI and, and run them that way. Um, and also here's your LEDs. So this is the LED information that you need. So you can you can type that all in one by one if you want, or you. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I don't have um, like a website or something where you can get this information. Um, but if there's somebody out there savvier than me and, and could post like the, the diff information, that would be like pretty nice for people. So this is all the things that I've changed to the to the flight controller. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump over to BOLES real quick and just kind of look through that real quick. And then... Uh, We'll jump back over to the bench and then we'll go for a fly. All right, so we're at the bench here. We have our props off. Okay. I know that's I know that's my channel name, but I mean it's serious business. Get your props off your quadcopter. All right, you have to have a lipo and plugged in to do anything in here. So we're connected USB and lipo, and we're gonna read our setup. Okay, so I have downloaded, you need to, if, if you're going to download software to your ESC, you need to have this information. Okay, and that's what you're going to search for in the Jazz Mavic uh, GitHub file. I don't think I'm going to get into that on this video. Um, I'm probably going to get into that on the, on the next build video um, of how to get that done, because I'm going to do it all over again. But you can see here, I had to reverse this one, normal, normal, and reverse. And then this is the firmware, 16.9 is the Jazz Mavic firmware that I'm using. And that's how I'm running RPM filtering. If you don't do this, you can't run it. And the, the um, bi-directional D-shot enabled in the configuration tab in the, in the beginning um, was defaulted on, on this board. And they didn't have the correct firmware on the ESC. So there's like no way this thing was going to fly. So, um, but yeah, if you, if you go in and, and you, um, you know, click on flash all, and then you can go in here, select file manually. Okay. Um, but you have to go to Jazz Map, um, GitHub and get the correct file. The GH30 was the correct file for me. Okay. So when you look at your ESC, this is G. GH30, that's what you're going after when you go after software for this ESC. You don't want to download G, GI20 because then that would be incorrect software and, and this is going to be all X's and L's and Y's and it's going to be a mess. So you have to flash the right one and you do flash all. Um, if you have an issue with that, you're going to have to flash each one of them and then write it. Okay. So I'm probably going to go through all that in the next build video. So stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, it's a good time to do that. So let's jump back to the bench real quick and then uh, we'll take it out for a rip. All right. So that's kind of everything in a nutshell. Obviously, this is just a quick, quick look at everything. I have a flight video uh, at the end of this. So we'll go ahead and uh, kind of wrap things up. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer what I can for you. Um, I hope that this helped somebody out. And, you know, if it did, hey, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hated it, you know, give me a thumbs down. But here's that flight video. Uh, 
enjoy the breeze. All right, so we're going to get ready here, take off, and then you'll notice I'm just kind of kind of rocking back and forth because the rate profile on this isn't quite set up yet. It just isn't quite set right. You know, it's the 87. But you can see this thing flows around pretty good. Actually, I was pretty surprised, you know, just for the, the you know size of it. And if you follow my channel, you've seen this area. I've, I've filmed quite a few times here. And this, I mean, this thing, honestly, that's the only reason I did this overview because I think it's worthy of a mention. I mean, this, this thing rips pretty, pretty good. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about this, let me know. Um, yeah, the build videos just, just wasn't happening. And I'll be honest with you, this is, you know, an hour long video itself. But I just think, you know, this is going to help somebody out there that's struggling. That's got this. I mean, I can just imagine the pieces and parts laying on the bench at somebody's house and them being so frustrated. Uh, I hope that this would help somebody. So let's throw some music on this and we'll finish out this pack. It gets a little more aggressive towards the end. So <laughs> I like to abuse it. Have a good one.